There are very few 5th edition D&D spells or mechanics in general that I would say are controversial, overpowered or even broken by default. In this video series I already covered some of those, but now it's time to talk about one of the most egregious spells, one of the biggest reasons why so many level 9 and above wizards become so powerful and so annoying. If you haven't guessed it by the title or the thumbnail or video description yet, it is Wall of Force, the best spell to trap the like, subscribe and bell icon buttons down below and force, no pun intended, the YouTube algorithm to teleport all the other videos away from your homepage, leaving only mine for you to watch. In essence, Wall of Force is an invisible barrier immune to all damage, an obstacle preventing anything from physically passing through it. It's immune to dispel magic and you cannot bypass it with spells like etherealness. The only quick fix is really a disintegrate spell or some teleport spell. It has two ways to be used, two modes. One is a flat surface barrier that you can deploy to, for example, buy yourself time as you're running away from a horde of gnolls so vast that you can't just fireball it away. Another is a hemispherical dome or a sphere that leaves no openings or exits for those you manage to trap or isolate inside. Now it's a level 5 spell fairly high, so why is all of this a problem? Well, let's start with disintegrate. It's a level 6 spell that requires you to be able to see the target you're trying to nuke. Since Wall of Force is invisible, you can't see it, obviously, right? You would need another spell, such as See Invisibility or True Seeing, to be able to target it with Disintegrate. So now, you need not just one, but two very specific spells, one or both being higher level than the one you're trying to eliminate. Seems a bit weird, seems a bit overpowered, right? Now, it is possible to prevent or escape Wall of Force, even if you don't have disintegrate primarily through teleportation spells and abilities. I did a little bit of research, not too much, digging through the official 5th edition D&D monsters and out of roughly 2200 of them, give or take a few, only about 10% have some form of escape from or denial of wall of force such as counter spell, dimension door, disintegrate, misty step, plane shift, teleport or thunder step or any such or similar ability. In other words, approximately 90% of all official monsters get completely shut down by this spell and there's nothing they can do about it. Out of those that do have some ways to deal with it, a lot of them are either very high or very low challenge rating and are not really appropriate enemies against level 9 to level 12 parties which seems to be where most characters end. A lot of them are also adventure specific monsters and NPCs, not some generic monster stat blocks. Granted, a lot of DMs do like to use these kinds of monsters and NPCs, so so you may find yourself dealing with them a bit more often than just 10% of the time, but even then your wall of force will reign supreme in most combat encounters even if you can't catch more than one enemy inside of it one at a time, right? But problems don't end there. These two tweets by Jeremy Crawford, Sage Advice tweets, seem to be heavily implying that wall of force provides total cover. If you accept this interpretation, 5th edition player's handbook pages 196 and 204 reveal that whatever is behind total cover cannot be targeted by any attacks, overwhelming majority of all spells in the game and most other abilities that target creatures, objects or areas. It has to have specific wording that says it has to ignore cover such as sacred flame or some such spell. It makes sense after all, it's called total cover for a reason, right? In other words, when you manage to trap one or more enemies inside of Wall of Force, if they don't have something to avoid or deal with it, they are unable to do anything until you simply let them out. And since there's no saving throw to avoid getting trapped inside in the first place, it just happens automatically, it's basically a near guaranteed way to remove a few enemies out of combat in every combat encounter while your party disposes of their companions. There is no other level 5 or even level 6 spell out there that provides this kind of control. Assuming Wall of Force does in fact provide total cover, if you are to challenge this assumption, when we take a closer look at a spell like Otilux Resilient Sphere, a level 4 spell that also creates a force sphere similar to wall of force, we are specifically told that nothing, not physical objects, energy or other spell effects can pass through the barrier in or out, though a creature in the sphere can breathe there. The sphere is immune to all damage and the creature or object inside cannot be damaged by attacks or effects originating from outside, nor can a creature inside the sphere damage anything outside of it. First, that's a much better, more detailed, clearer spell effect description, we know exactly 
exactly what it is supposed to do. Second, Wall of Force has a much more ambiguous, undefined paragraph which states nothing can physically pass through the wall, it is immune to all damage and cannot be dispelled by dispel magic. A disintegrate spell destroys the wall instantly, however, the wall also extends into ethereal plane, blocking ethereal travel through the wall. Does this mean that Wall of Force only prevents arrows, projectiles, physical spell effects like magic stone or acid splash? What about air? Do creatures inside suffocate slowly for 10 minutes because it's considered matter, therefore it's considered something physical and then it cannot pass through because the spell says that nothing can physically pass through the wall. If you look at Force Cage, a level 7 spell with a very similar spell effect, it specifically states, a prison in the shape of a box can be up to 10 feet on a side, creating a solid barrier that prevents any matter from passing through it and blocking any spells cast into or out from the area. This is also clear, concise, it eliminates confusion, but sadly Wall of Force doesn't provide this level of information. Finally, Globe of Invulnerability can only prevent spells of up to level 8 from breaching through at best, and that's with the level 9 spell slot, but it doesn't prevent arrows, projectiles or matter in general from passing through in any way, shape or form. Meanwhile, if we accept Jeremy Crawford's interpretation, Wall of Force does all that and more with a mere level 5 spell slot. Granted, you can still attack and cast spells from inside Globe of Invulnerability, while you typically cannot do that within Wall of Force, but I find it hard to imagine a level 5 spell protecting you perfectly from a level 9 spell Meteor Swarm, while a level 6 spell upcasted to a level 9, designed specifically to protect you against other spells, cannot protect you from other level 9 spells, right? It simply cannot do that because that's what, what it says in the description. I can go on about this spell and how problematic it is, but you and I, we need solutions, right? There are several routes you can take, in my opinion. You can decide to ignore all of this, keep the like, subscribe and bell button strapped within the wall of YouTube algorithm and simply let wizards dominate from level 9 onward with their four spheres trapping enemies in basically every combat encounter. However, I would advise against that. I suggest some kind of nerf to make the spell more in line with the other level 5 spells and basically the rest of the game. You could go the rules as written route, as we already kind of discussed, and say that Wall of Force only prevents physical attacks and effects, as well as any kind of matter from going through it, as the description of the spell itself suggests, right? This means that all the spells and other abilities, whatever they are, which produce non-physical effects can in fact pass through it. There are a lot of them and it would make things more interesting and more engaging while still providing some level of control that this spell is known for. This is the one that appeals to me the most and I will be playtesting this kind of nerf in my own games. Alternatively, you could take a peek into D&D 3.5 which also had Wall of Force obviously, but that version of the spell, that iteration of the spell couldn't form into a sphere or a dome. It was simply, as the name suggests, an annoying wall, but you could get away from it or maybe go around it. If this all seems a bit too extreme to you, then I suggest you take a look at dmsworkshop.com article from 2018. It proposed a much more verbose description for this spell and made it susceptible to large chunks of damage. I'm not saying that, you know, take this kind of you know, nerf word for word, but you know, especially since I haven't play tested any of these modifications myself yet, but uh, the link will be in the description, so check it out, I mean, you have nothing to lose, right? Somewhere below or above that link will be a link to this channel's Patreon page too. There you can download the video script text file I wrote and read out loud for this video. It's available for all Fireball and above tier supporters. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, especially in these troubled globally challenging economic times, but if you do find the Patreon perks worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, consider supporting my efforts there. This video is sponsored by Historica Arcanum, a soon to be launched Kickstarter bringing a plethora of new character customization options, mainly the profession system, a campaign set in 19th century Istanbul, as well as tools for DMs who want to run 5th edition D&D campaigns in alternate history and history inspired settings. If you're interested and don't want to miss out on the early bird discount, Discounts, all the links you need are in the description below this video. Special shout out to all of my current patrons, thank you for your continued support. I know there's been a lack of new characters and updates lately, but that is about to change very, very, very soon, so stay tuned. With everything said and done, Min Max Munching out.
Talk to you soon.